Good evening. This is the 6 o'clock news with me, Rob Burgundy. Tonight, we were going to talk to you about the death of Osama bin Laden, but instead, we have a talk with the director of In the Air, Ben Williams. Let's go to him now. Look, no, no, no. No, I don't care. Here you are. No, Spielberg means nothing to me. No. No, Stephen. Stephen. Stephen, no. Listen. Unless I see six figures... No, no, seven figures on that contract. No awesome direction from me to you. Well, you're, you're quite frankly, you're less polite than I think you are. And by the way, I didn't like Indiana Jones. It was terrible. Well, go to hell to you. Hello, Ben. Ben, can you hear me? So, Ben, in what ways does your media product use, develop, or challenge forms and conventions of real media products? Because it's an important question that people want to know. I find it all foolish that you'd ask me such a question, but for you guys, I don't mind. Hmm, okay. It's a very good question, so I'll split it up into the different kinds of media that we've used in the film, starting with the conventions of a short film. Now, these conventions include very little dialogue, often using voiceovers instead, having a low budget, having very few locations, and a small cast. Now, it is often a short length because of the creator is only intending to explain such a short story within the space of five or six minutes. Now, there is little or no dialogue because of this, as having the film explained by narration or through the actions of the actors is more powerful in such a short amount of time. The budget for a short film is often low because it is entirely funded by the filmmakers themselves, resulting in a reduced expenditure on props and costume, only using the essentials and using fewer locations because of travel costs. Now, our film has used dialogue in each of our film, each scene, in each scene of our film, but very little was used. A lot of narration has been used instead to explain the changes of the story, which I believe added a lot more suspense and effect rather than using lots of dialogue. We kept our cast really small, as, as well as our budget, only spending a small amount of money on several props. The only expenses we had in our film was the banana milkshake for the scene in the pub, and the travelling expenses for going to Birmingham for our first attempt at shooting the cabbie scene. Now, the plot does not include many main characters, so we kept our cast fairly small. However, we did not keep locations to a minimum. We used Callum's home, Steph's home, the pub for the dating scene, Cadbury's World, Celtisha College, and the Crew Town Centre. Six locations in total. We had so many locations in order to represent the long journey Bert the Gorilla took, and also because we had to reshoot the Cadbury's World scene at the college entrance instead. A short film needs to be a, have a strong mise on shot, using a good variety of shots to keep the audience interested through the strong visuals. This is the same reason the film requires a strong mise en scène, in terms of costume, lighting, editing, props and scenery. By using both mise en scène and mise en shot correctly, the visuals will be strong enough to give a complete sense of verisimilitude and continuity not just looking at, like it has been filmed through a camera in the same position. I believe that with In the Air, we have been able to do just that. The film has been included with many different angled shots, and many shots with a, de a very decent range of distance. We knew, when, we knew when to make which shots close-ups to show the emotion of the characters, angle shots to display dominance, and long shots to display fully to the audience what is happening in a scene. In order to advertise our product, we also created a radio trailer for the film. The conventions of a radio trailer consist of a deep male, deep male voiceover in order to grab the attention of listeners more powerfully, dramatic music to keep them interested, clips from the film to also give the interest, and with sound effects to heighten the impact that the trailer has on the listeners. We have, of course, used the deep voice using my own. I did my absolute best to ensure the way I made my voice and the way I spoke matched the documentary genre that the film has to heighten the appeal to the listeners. We used In the Air itself and Jungle Sounds for the background music, which I believe combine the elements of what Bert the Gorilla is, a star primate, because of his fame of an advert with a Phil Collins song, but also still is a primate at heart in a very deep struggle in a very social society. The Gorilla Roar sound effect also did this, 
by playing this sound effect at the beginning, at the beginning, a large impact was given to the audience, or because a loud noise such as a roar already creates a feeling of suspense, which I believe will keep them listening throughout the throughout the trailer. The clip was the clip we used was a quote saying, "Get out and stay out. You're making a monkey out of me." Well, I, which I obviously found bloody hilarious. Good improvise, good improvisation by the actor. By using this example. It is shown to the audience that although we have used subtle humor in this film, the main drive of the story is to show the hard, the hard and tension-filled journey Bert will go through. Now, the other, the other bit of advertisement we used for our film to, uh, to heighten its popularity is the magazine review, which, I, which was mainly done by Primates Monthly. Now, the conventions of a magazine often consist of one to two pages, often using illustrated pictures, possibly the main visual aspects of the film, which we found to be the most appealing to the audience, and a well-structured text, which will, which will make sure that the audience will read it properly and thoroughly by not looking too visually boring. And also with a stunning background to make the, the text stand out, and when the audience will first read that magazine review, they will find that incredibly interesting. I, I believe that in our, magazine review, in our magazine review, we also did that. We used a powerful black background, well, well, very well noticeable visual text, and the pictures we used, I believe, was the best way to represent what the film is. A, do a documentary with very subtle dry humour as well, as I said before, but again, it's also about the hard journey that Bert the Gorilla will go through. And uh, another convention of, of a magazine review, often for a film, video game, or a television programme, often gives a rating, or, and also an age rating. You know, the, the minimum age a person can view it, and whether it's good or not. I believe the, the film was given around four and a half stars. Watch out, man. Uh, yeah, overall, which is pretty good. Well, but I hope you enjoyed this time with me, and thank you for listening. Thank you, Ben, for that very detailed statement. I think that is all we have time for this week. You stay classy, crew.